All right, time now for All Things Gators, All Things Orange and Blue. Dan Hicken and Frank Frangie. What's up, Hick? Uh, doing great, Frank. Uh, thank you to Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, se-ortho.com, the very best of the business for giving us this podcast. Frank, uh, lots to cover, a lot of things going on, but do you smell it a little bit? Do you smell spring in the air? You know what spring means, Frank? What does it mean for you, Dan? Spring's awesome. Well, there's, 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 there's two kinds of sports in, in Northeast Florida. Yeah, football yeah. and there's spring football. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. And that's some not might, too far some, off. Some might say there's recruiting season. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And and then there's preseason, but I'm yeah. with you. I uh yeah, you know what? Number one, there's a spring game coming. We haven't had yeah. one of those in a while. Yeah. Well, there's nothing better than a spring game. Uh the Gators remain undefeated lifetime in spring games. Everybody feels good. Yeah, and I and and someone's gonna come out of nowhere that you've never heard of. Mm-hmm. And they probably won't be really very good in the fall, but it'll be fun to spend all summer thinking they're a breakthrough. I, I, I love, to your point, I love what the football program is. I want to see the facility. Yeah. I want to see a beautiful spring day on April 16th. Might go down, I think. I think I made yeah. good attendance. What do you yeah. think? And I think, too, I think next week they'll they'll get out there for the first time under Billy Napier. And, look, practices are closed. They're going to open it up for, like, 15 minutes, I think, to the media for the stretching and such. No big deal. But at least we'll start to talk about some ball. And it'll be interesting to hear him – He's done a great job in establishing his program, but ultimately it's all about wins and losses. So we got to see what they look like, what the feel is, what kind of coach he is. He's, you know, it'll be, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm, I miss the days of open practices. Yeah. Uh, the ball coach, you go to any practice. It was always open fans, media, whoever. I miss those days. I know the internet and everything get going viral has changed that. And I get it, mm-hmm. but I do miss those days. Uh, having said that, I've had many coaches tell me if there's one year you're gonna you're gonna close practices, mm-hmm. it's the first year at a new program. Okay. Because nobody knows what to expect. And why would you show teams or other people what to expect if you the one year you have a little bit of that advantage mm-hmm. it is the first year? And mm-hmm. I've heard and I've heard a number of first year coaches have that conversation. So I get it. Mm-hmm. As much as I'd love to see it, I certainly understand. But I can't wait for football. I think uh, the haze in the barn in terms of who's going to be on the team. I don't think there's any more portal guys coming. No. Some portal guys could leave, yeah. but I don't think anybody else of significance is coming that will impact this season. Do you? No, I don't. It's, you know, it's interesting. Like yesterday, and I, we'll stay on Gators, but I saw the Arizona State quarterback went to LSU. I, right. You know, late late portal move. And there'll be some of those, but I I don't know, man. I mean, I, those kinds of things. You get to this late, man. It, it kind of starts to. I, I wonder. I feel for kids. You know, I feel yeah. for kids. I feel. For, I'm thinking about this Miles Brennan kid. Like, I know he might win the job, but I mean, this guy. You know, I get hurt. It's my job. It's not my job. I decide to stay. You tell me to stay, and now you go get another guy. Right. Right. It's just. I, 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 it's the game that they got to play, but it's it's fascinating to me. But anyway, uh, let's do Gator hoops. What do you think? Right. Uh, kind of went <laughs> as expected, I guess. You know, in the end, we could say, well, this game or this game or this game, but. Florida is what it is. They're not, they, you know, the, 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 the transfer portal didn't work out great for Florida this year. They managed to win 19 games. Um, I don't think either of us suspect that they're going to beat A&M and Auburn. No. Um, we know the schedule now. Uh, that's what they need to do if they want to get in the tournament. And some would suggest that might not even be enough. Yeah, I, I would. I don't think there's any chance they get in without those two wins. Mm-hmm. I think they could get in with those two wins. In fact, I'll go as far as to say I think they, they are in if they win both games. Yeah. That means that that means two wins over Auburn, but I don't think they're going to do it. Look, at the end of the day, this is an NIT team. We've watched them enough. Yeah, yeah. They're on the cut. They're really close. Mm-hmm. They're really close to being decent. Um, I think they will kick themselves, and I've said this the day after it happened. Yeah. But that one point loss and fouling the three pointer at Texas A and M. A and M isn't wasn't very good at all. Then they lost eight in a row. To they their credit, play. they came back a little bit and got back on the bubble. So we sort of jump started them with that win, but and they had a nice win over Alabama. But you're right. That that's that the one's game. the one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the game you couldn't lose. If they win that game and everything else stays the same, they're 20 and 11 and 10 and 8. And I think they're in. So I think I hate to say that a loss at te- a midweek loss at Texas AM cost them the tournament, but that is my opinion. That's the game they couldn't afford to lose. And I have a lot of people that watch the podcast and say, wait a minute. You guys said all along, nine and nine, and they're in, nine and nine, and they're in. Well, I did think that. Yeah. But things change. It doesn't yeah. feel like that anymore. It feels like the way with so many bubble teams around the country, so many teams, even in the SEC, they're all lumped in there together. I, I don't think they're in now. I, I, I don't think I, I agree. I, I just keep going back to, though, it, somewhere, because I think we were on, I think we agreed about that. 
But somewhere the dialogue changed. And I really feel like it changed after the Auburn win. That yeah. did not give them enough juice, in my opinion, uh, when they beat the number two team on their home floor. I felt like that would automatically and 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 the experts kept them kept them, you know, next four out or, you know, those type of spots. And I feel like somewhere the narrative on Florida basketball for this year changed. And I, I thought that was like I said, I, I could see there and make an argument for 1911 and 99 should get in. And it's it's close, but. It is what it is. I mean, you, yeah, you know, I, you make I, your own bed, and they made yeah, their bed. That's right. And after after that, after they didn't move much after beating Auburn, we had that talk, and I said, mm-hmm. "Listen, I think the general belief in the in, in the masses now is that they're not that good, and they were going to turn around three days later and lose the home game, which they did to Arkansas. If you're as good as that Auburn win should have showed that you are, well, then three days later you're still at home, you win again. Yeah. Okay. Auburn's better than Arkansas. Yeah. So if you can beat Auburn at home. Three days later, if you've really turned the corner, then you beat Arkansas. Yeah. And I think the the fact that it didn't move them very much, Dan, is people knows, people believe it was a bit of a fluke, and it yeah. was. And yeah. look, Florida's right on the cusp. They played Kentucky, couldn't make anything, right, and still had it as a, a relatively close game because they played hard, they played right. with great passion, and and so look, they played as hard as they could. They're not that good this year. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, that doesn't mean you fire the coach. What it means is they're not that good this year. They're right. they're probably an NIT team. Uh, we saw the the first real sign of that came when they lost at home in the preseason to Texas Southern. Yeah. When Texas Southern, I don't I don't care if they're better than you think. They right. were Owen, when Owen seven Texas Southern. That was a shocker. Comes into your arena and guts you by twenty. You're probably that's probably who you are. Yeah. You know, no yeah. matter what, there's upsets, but there's not upsets like that one. No. And that no. probably showed who they are. They're probably an NIT team. Uh, again, I think there's 50 50. They beat AM. This, I'm not convinced of it. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think there's any chance they beat Auburn. No. And I think they're headed to the NIT, a first round matchup with LaSalle. And by the way, I have no idea if LaSalle is any good. That's just my take on the NIT is always first round matchup with LaSalle. LaSalle. That'd be yeah. fun. Uh, that'd be great. So that's Gator basketball in a nutshell uh, going forward. Now, uh, look. Uh, stock up Gator baseball. What a great yeah. weekend, especially after losing the Friday opener um, to come back and to get the pitching. I thought from Sprout and Manning was terrific for the Gator baseball team. And that's a, definitely a harbinger of good things to come. I, I, I hope. So we did our radio show from the Florida UNF game a week ago. Mm-hmm. And we, we set up the tent right next to the UNF bullpen. Okay? okay. And so on the, on the UNF side, and then the Florida bullpens on the other side. So in a weird twist, Brandon Spoke, who started that game, before the game, warmed up in the UNF bullpen. And then I thought, well, maybe something's wrong with the Florida bullpen. But, but, then he, but then the rest of the Florida relievers warmed up in the Florida bullpen on the first base side the rest of the game. And for whatever okay. reason, Brandon Spoke warmed up right in front of me. Okay. Dan, probably eight feet away from where I was. Okay. That's how close we were to the bullpen. And I, and I was right across from him. It had to be impressive. Bro, he was popping the mitt. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I've seen a lot of guys warm up, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How hard must he be throwing? Yeah. And then he hit 98 that night, Yeah. okay? And then I, and then, and I was told by Jeff Cardozo that he thought he may start on Saturday. We mm-hmm. talked about that on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Whoo, boy, if, he's la- if, if that's who he is. Yeah. If he is, I mean, Timmy Manning was good on set Sunday, too. Mm-hmm. But if Spro, who the, you're already down 1-0 in the series. Mm-hmm. That You had to get that one to get even. He was hitting 97. That change was filthy. The breaking pitch was tight. If Brandon Sprout is who he was on Saturday, mm-hmm. they're going to play for a long time because they obviously can hit. Right. They're better defensively than they have been. Mm-hmm. You know they've got an ace on Hunter Barco on, on Friday nights. Mm-hmm. But Coppola is very good. He just had the back stuff. Yeah. I'm te- the Ryan Slater, the closer out of the Tampa Clearwater area, is really good. Mm-hmm. If if Sproats as good as it looks like, because they're going to hit. It looks like they're going to hit. Mm-hmm. This could be a really fun baseball season. Yeah, Colby Halter, Jacksonville kid, 15-game hitting streak. So, uh, congrats to him. I guess Sully raves about the Thompson kid and, and and likened him as if you were listening to the broadcast yesterday from Coral Gables, they likened him to, like, Bellinger and O'Neill. Yeah. He's, so, he's that style. Of, I don't yeah, think that's good, but that's okay. He's a, had a hell of a catch handed. out in right field, too. So, I mean, a lot, a lot of good things to like about Gator baseball. Stock up for me. I was a little hesitant about it but if they can play like they played this weekend and again Miami's a good test I mean Miami and that's a that's a that's a 
credit to Sully, who's flipped that yeah. switch and has now right. beaten him, what, seven out of eight series, I think, and, and, has, and has a really good record yeah. against the Canes. Yeah, and I'll tell you this, uh, a couple of thoughts about the specifics of them. Mm-hmm. The newer guys looks like can hit and, yeah. and can pitch. Uh, Halter, Sterling Thompson. Yeah. There's, there's guys you didn't know about that are going to help them. If the older guys start to hit, Cali Lau hit two home runs in that series. Yeah. Uh, Fabian hit one that still hasn't landed in that right. series. Right, right. If, if they can get Armstrong going a little bit. If the veteran guys, this guy, this new guy, Riapal, the, the, the mm-hmm. transfer from Coastal, the catcher, the left-hand hitting catcher is going to be pretty good. If they can get the older guys hitting, I'm telling you, it'll be a really good year. I, I'm with you. I, I After two years ago, I had a great team, and then the season got canceled. Last year, clearly a clearly a disappointing season for them. It looks like they're bad. You realize Sully's in his 14th year? We had that conversation. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? He's yeah. been there that long? Yeah. Wow. 14 years, one yeah. title, a bunch of Omaha trips, and uh, this could be a special team too, I think. Well, let's hope so. So that was that was good. Um, you know, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention, you know, Friday Night Heights. And a tie. All they all they do is win or tie. That's right. Tie. So, but but look, they they tied Auburn. But I'll tell you what. But the number again, if Frank, if you if you, you know, for those of us who know the game, right? Like you those and I, of you, yeah, yeah. Uh, the number that they scored was astronomical. Yeah, their yeah, total you, number. Yeah, no, you, I think no they went question. over one ninety eight, Frank. Yeah, yeah, hey, Frank, you me. hit one ninety eight. We're talking national championship contender. Yeah, that's what I'm told. Look, you know, you're 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 more of the, the Jim Street reporter. Um, uh, let me tell you this: um, baseball's in great shape. Yeah. Spring sports are. I'm very excited. I'm very about about. We're glad Finley got an extension. I think he's the right person to mm-hmm. finally breathe life into that program. Yeah, the season didn't end the way they wanted it to, but it, they certainly had a great run this season. But I do want to get back before we get out of here to men's basketball for a second. Okay, so. They're going to, in all likelihood, they're going to the NIT. Okay, right. in all in all likelihood, they're 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 going to they're going to win one at the most in the SEC tournament. They're probably going to the NIT. Mm-hmm. How does that? Uh, now they've got a really good recruiting class coming in next year. I don't have the names in front of me, but two five stars and a four star. Um, the six nine f- forward is supposed to be one of the best players in the country. Mm-hmm. The six ten center, the six four point guard is really good. Um, Aberdeen, I think, is the point guard. The the they don't have a lot of guys returning. Right. What's the state of the, in your opinion, Dan, what's the state of the basketball program with a likely appearance in the NIT, three very good recruits coming in, a lot of guys leaving because of all the transfers, a few more portal guys coming in, I think somewhere along the line. What's the state of the program in your opinion? It's a great question. Um, it's, it's in flux a little bit. It's to be determined. It's uh, an important year next year. For Mike White, uh, I don't think it's uh, as as much as you know me. I love Mike White. I love him coaching the team. Um, I'm not down. I'm not, in the end. We didn't hit on the portal guys. The portal guys didn't come through this year. But I'm not down on the program. I feel like, uh, I, but I feel like it's it's certainly more than fair to want Florida to be in the tournament um, most years. And and so they had a down year this year. But I fully expect them to figure things out, rise back, and and get back going again next year and uh, uh, see what these young kids can do. And, and, but he's going to have to, clearly he's going to have to hit on some portal guys this time around, Frank. Yeah. So, so, so you and I both think they shouldn't fire the coach. We've said no. that no. there's people, uh, the younger Twitter uh, oh, yeah. fans think they should, which I get. Yeah. But here's my question. What if they're ordinary again next year? Yeah. What if, what if next year's basketball team, is middle of the pack SEC. You're talking like the same type thing, 1911, nine and nine? Even if they're a little better. Yeah. What if the, what if they're 10 and eight? Um, they get into the tournament as a nine seed, but they're still looking up at Kentucky, Auburn, Alabama, LSU, whoever, Tennessee. D- does, d- is there a change? Is there not? Is it because the noise in the system isn't going away? The noise no, in the system will. isn't going away no. until they hang a 28 and five. And or a two seed. Yeah. Until that, until that year comes, yeah. the noise isn't going away. Does the noise force Scott Strickland's hand, or does Scott say, "No, nope, I got the right guy. I'm standing pat." What, where is this thing headed in your opinion? I, I, I guess it just depends on your perspective of the program. I and mean, we've beaten our heads up against the wall on this a thousand times. It just really depends on your perspective of the program. I personally am uh, very happy with what Mike White's done. Um, I can bring out the numbers. I saw one today through, uh, uh, there's this guy in Duke 
and through his first five years of coaching, I believe he was 111 and 105. Wow. You know, Is that right? Yeah. His ass would have been run out of uh, 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 Durham in this day and age. In the Twitter age? Can you yeah. imagine if, can yeah. you imagine if 111 and 105? Yeah, five his, years his ass no would be gone. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think there are great challenges in that program. I do. And I think until people accept those great challenges, um, we can sit there and put it all on Mike White. And the facilities are good. Uh, the passion is average at best. The the program is um, again resume versus program. Like I would say, this Florida's resume is better than Tennessee, LSU. Is Florida's program better than Tennessee, LSU? I don't think so. I think yeah. Billy Donovan added to the resume, and that's why the the resume is good, but I don't know that the program is the program is you know not my, better than Arkansas, Frank. Right. You know? Right. It's just you, not you know my point on that. I, yeah. my, I just, what you said, I think other than Kentucky and maybe Arkansas. Yeah. I think Tennessee and Florida and LSU and Alabama and Auburn yeah. are all the same. Yeah. If you get a great coach, you're going to have a great stretch. Yeah. If not, you're not, if you get Dale Brown or Billy Donovan or, or, or Bruce Pearl, you're going to yeah. have a good run. And if you want to try that, if that's Scott Strickland's way, like, I wonder what, you know, we should talk to Jeremy Foley. Like, what would yeah. Jeremy Foley's attitude be towards? Because Jeremy Foley was very hell-bent on winning. Yeah. You know, and he, uh, better than average, was never good enough for Jeremy Foley. I wonder yeah. what he would think uh, yeah. with, and, with a Mike and, White. And a lot of it with him is that he really likes Mike White, or does, yeah. or does Scott really like Mike White? Yeah, so I, so I wonder where it's headed. Yeah. I And by the way, to your point, and I even hate to bring this up because somebody's going to say Frank and Dan are blaming the fans. Nobody's blaming the fans. No. But to your point, I don't think it was sold out Saturday, was it? I I, I wasn't there, so I don't know. But I, I, I know that there either. were you know a couple thousand Kentucky fans there for sure. Yeah. So, but I I saw somewhere the lead of a story. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember who wrote it. And I apologize, writer, for not remembering who wrote mm -hmm. it. Maybe Zach Albaverde. I don't know. Somebody wrote it. Maybe mm -hmm. Graham Hall and with the Gainesville Sun. I don't know mm -hmm. who wrote it. But the lead to the story said in front of almost ten thousand fans. Mm -hmm. I remember. I remember the story. The lead to the story yeah. was in front of almost, and maybe it's about Keontae, which we should, we were remiss if we don't bring that oh, up. Oh, yeah, we will. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful yes. moment. Great moment. I got great moment. Thank you to Florida, to yes. Coach Cal and Kentucky. Yes. Or yes. Everybody. It was a magnificent moment in Florida history. And, and great I loved moment. every bit of it. Yeah, so. so happy for that. And so, yeah. again, what a bright future he has with or without oh, basketball. And I know right. he desperately wants to play basketball. And I'm happy that he has a, an insurance policy that's going to give him $5 million. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think he's the kind of kid, if the doctor said he could play, he'd gladly hand that 5 million back right. and, because he loves and, the sport so much. And by the, and, and one real tip of the, I'm going to get back to my other point, but yeah. one real tip of the cap to him too, is this, he could have walked away and said, yeah. okay, I, I was the, I was the sort of coach guy for a year or yeah. for a couple months. Yeah. 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 And, but I, I'm, I, this is killing me. I'm a basketball yeah. player. I'm yeah. He never left that nope. bench. He never left practice. No, nope. he never abandoned those guys. His hey, Mike White his got brothers. emotional talking about him after the game. It was it was special. That was a special yeah. moment for a special young man who will forever uh, yeah. be known in the Gator in Gator right. history. Right, and and real and has earned that. And and mm -hmm. I and I hope he, I, it'd be hard to clear him. I get it. I'm not a doctor, right. but right. it'd be hard to be the doctor that says yes. Yep. But but I but I but I hope he gets to play again if that's what his dream is. But yep. But but back to the point, just for a second. Sure. I read a story that said in front of almost 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. Well, even with the renovated exact tech, it mm -hmm. used to hold 12, five mm -hmm. with the renovated exact tech. It holds about 11, five. Mm -hmm. So if the story said in front of almost 10,000 people, yeah, that, in, and I wasn't there, I'm like you, so I don't want right. I don't want to, I'm not right. trying to be judgmental. That means 1,500 empty seats. That well, and the other, Frank, what, 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 they will, what the fans will say now is, well, why would I go? It's boring basketball. He's no fun. He's no, I mean, that's, that's the, and well, you go because you, you yeah. have a moment like you did against Auburn. And you hope yeah. for that. You hope as and an That's not the right answer. The right answer isn't, why would I go? The right yeah. answer is, it's harder to coach at a school where everybody doesn't go regardless, especially Correct. for a, it's a small gym. Listen, for, I'll just say this, and I, and I got this secondhand. All right. But I know someone who knows a couple of the transfer kids and they were. Let's just say they were surprised at the. Where Florida basketball is in terms yeah. of the program, in yeah. terms of attendance, in terms of uh, they were 
more than surprised a little bit by that. So yeah. again, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough, it's tough. It's a tough spot. Yeah. And that's not blaming fans. I'm not I know blaming them. There's that. plenty we're, of fans that I think it all, I don't care. You can get mad at me all you want. I'm not yeah. going to change the way I feel. And all I know right. I'm right. I know I'm but right that, about the program. It. The program is not a top 25 program unless you have an unbelievable coach. And that's an interesting take you. I had not heard that, that some of the players came in from other programs mm-hmm. thinking they were going to the, cause they saw the swamp on TV mm-hmm. and thinking they're going to this crazed crowd yeah. and crazed. Yeah. And it, it's not that. And again, no. that's not, that's not an excuse, but it, the reality is it's not that. No. And, and it, it's, and it never was that yeah. except in Billy's great years. Right. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah it's just the so, truth. Anyway, so anyway, good stuff today, Frank, as always. That's Let's all talk spring Gators. ball next week. You want to? I know it. I know it. All things Gators, all things orange and blue. Dan Hick and Frank Francis. Yeah, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, se-ortho.com, the very best in the business. Frank, you have a wonderful week. You too, Hick. See you.